The most iconic rivalry in all of sports is the Red Sox and the Yankees. The rivalry that was once sparked because Babe Ruth was sold to the Yankees. The Red Sox would get $100,000 back and a curse that would last for 86 years with no World Series win. Meanwhile, for the Yankees, they would win 27 World Series, the most for any sports franchise ever. But the early 2000s would mark a brand new era for both of these two organizations. The Red Sox attempted to hire the Moneyball guy, but failed, and instead hired Theo Epstein. But in Theo's first season leading the front office, the curse of the Bambino would strike again in Game 7 of the ALCS. Aaron Boone would hit a walk-off home run to send the Yankees to another World Series. But unfortunately for New York, a string of bad events would proceed to happen. New York would lose the 2003 World Series 4-2 to the Marlins, and in 2004, it really wouldn't be much better. Actually, it would be a lot worse for the Yankees. On August 31st, 2004, the curse was officially broken. No, the Red Sox did not win the World Series, at least yet, but something happened. Manny Ramirez hit a foul ball that hit a kid in the mouth, knocking two of the kid's teeth out. The kid's favorite player was Manny Ramirez, and the kid lived on a farm that was once owned by Babe Ruth. Ironically, the Red Sox would beat the Yankees in the ALCS to go and win their first World Series in 86 years. Fast forward to 2024, and we have a lot to talk about. The Yankees and Red Sox rivalry is dead. Red Sox fans hate one other team more than they hate the Yankees. And oddly enough, Red Sox fans are choosing to hate the Red Sox. The ownership group, Fenway Sports Group, has brought four championships to Boston, which is more than any other team since 2000. Yet, in the last five years, they have only made the playoffs one time and have pocketed the revenue that the Red Sox have generated. Fenway Park is no longer America's favorite ballpark and has turned into America's favorite museum. The Red Sox have come up with a new name for Fenway, and it is called the Fenway Experience. Fenway Experience. In other words, a dumbass experience. Okay, kids, get in the car. We're going to go to the museum. Let's go to Fenway Park for the experience. Stupid. They spent almost no money this offseason, but don't worry. They spent $1.6 billion on Fenway Park last year. A lower payroll, but at least you get a Fenway experience. The Red Sox simply do not care anymore. They framed former GM Heim Bloom as the reason why they were not spending money and proceeded to operate exactly like Heim Bloom. The only impact signing that the Red Sox have made was Lucas Giolito, but oh wait, he's already out with UCL surgery all year. All of this has resulted in the greatest rivalry in all of sports to go stale, but it might not be completely lost. Both teams still have an opportunity to revive the rivalry, and this is my plan on how you revive it. But here's a word from today's sponsor. Rival Fantasy, who created a new experience in fantasy baseball. It's called Best Ball. You draft your team once a week, and a rival will do the rest. Your starting lineup will be automatically adjusted to your top scores for the week. Let's say that you're a busy person, and you don't have that much time to go and manage your team. Well, that would be good news for you, because you no longer have to invest your time into roster management. All you have to do is draft weekly. Oh, and did I mention that you will win free money if you are a top three performer in your league? There are six team drafts, nine team drafts, and even more. Make sure to sign up using the link in the description to get $25 for free to spend on Rival Fantasy. Enjoy the rest of the video. The formula for the Red Sox World Series team in 2018 was simple. Step one, build a team with a player like Mookie Betts, Xander Bogarts, Ben Attendee, and more. Being able to develop that type of talent up through the system was arguably the most important step in the entire process, because this step led to the MVP of the 2018 season in Mookie Betts. But step two was arguably even more important. Spend money by building and buying the team. They ranked number one in payroll, and you know what? It worked. Over 2016, 17, and 18, they bought talent. 
Whether it was a free agent signing in J.D. Martinez or bringing in David Price, the man who was so close to a World Series MVP, the ability of hitting on almost all of these signings and all of these trades led to a 108-win Red Sox team. But there's always been one flaw with that team when regarding 2018. The future of the team looked bad. I mean, they traded away many of their young prospects so that the team could get good. Except, it's not nearly as bad as you'd think, and let me tell you this. The 2024 Red Sox best players are from the past resume. Casas, Duran, Bayo, Devers, all of these players were in the Red Sox organization at some point in 2018. So yeah, they had a flow of prospects, they were winning at the MLB level, and record money was being spent. But here in 2024, it has been quite the opposite. The new formula is based on drafting and literally nothing else. Boston has not spent money and they have not made any big trades. Or have they? Trading away the generational Mookie bets in 2020 was huge, but it was also a massive failure. When Connor Wong is the only one left from that trade package, you know that you did bad. For big signings, I guess they signed Trevor Story to a six-year deal worth 140 mil. The problem with all of these signings is that they have all been terrible. They've placed fifth place three times since 2020 and are projected to be the fifth place team once again. But do not worry, there is still at least some hope. With the top five farm system in baseball, the lineup is going to be atop the league very, very soon. The ownership has also said over and over again, we will spend money at some point. When will some point come? It could be 2025, it could be 2026, but there is a path for this team to win again. As for the Yankees, their formula has been the most interesting across baseball. For the longest time, buying a team worked in New York. Their market was a competitive advantage for many, many years. Spending record money almost every offseason. But recently, it's a philosophy that has gone old. When the Yankees haven't won a World Series since 2009, you know that there is a problem. Step one to the old Yankees formula was utilizing money on veterans. Players like LeMahieu, Rodon, and Rizzo, they had a combined war metric in 2023 of one. This means that they brought almost no value to the Yankees. Those three players have a combined salary of 59 mil in 2024. Cashman did a terrible job with all of these contracts, and honestly, spending money was their one and only step in their formula for a very long time, but in 2024, it has been reinvented. Step one has recently been let all of the young guys that you possibly can play, like Volpe, Dominguez. These guys need to develop and play as much as possible. Step two, spend money as usual. But as of recently, they've introduced a step three into the formula. Instead of just spending money, why not fix the weaknesses on the team? The 2023 Yankees were slow, old, boring, they couldn't hit, they couldn't defend. The outfield was terrible after Judge got hurt. It got so bad that Brian Cashman had to have an entire press conference in the middle of the season apologizing to his fans. It got so bad that he called out Giancarlo Stanton after the season. In 2024, with Judge, Soto, Verdugo, and plenty of depth ready to play, this team is getting younger, faster, better. And the Yankees becoming good again is step one to the rivalry becoming good again. As of right now, they have not beat the Red Sox in a playoff series since 2003. The rivalry is dead right now, but hopefully it will be back in the future.